thank you very much and good afternoon. On the corrupt uh, evaluation, very specifically, facts and figures, 35 substances have been selected between 2012 to 2016. 35 substances have been selected because also of potential ED properties. And actually 16 of those substances as based, their selection has been actually based only on ED properties. Um, this is something that is currently ongoing. So all these substances uh, are now uh, part of the evaluation. And one thing to remind while we're talking about Europe, I would like to focus a lot on member states because the chemical legislation is very much member state driven in these days. And member states are performing the evaluation. Of course, you might expect some different approaches and different quality sometime uh, to, to that process. What could be the outcome? Well, CORAP, as you know, is opening the door to many other options at the end of the day. Um, in some cases, the evaluation process can trigger prioritization under reach or under, under sector-specific legislation if the ID properties are confirmed. And to give you some material and reading, you can probably check if one of, your, of those substances is yours, whether you produce or use um, those substances. And then you can confirm as well your knowledge on geography. Now we have the names of the countries as well. And again, to walk away from the theory, we have already four substances. Indeed, it's a kind of a very cautious start because the number of substances on the candidate list is pretty high, but we have already four that are based on ED properties. Uh, proposed by Germany, and one has been recommended for inclusion in Annex 14. One more is probably coming in June. So again, it's, nothing is happening probably in terms of uh, coming up with specific on the criteria. The discussion is still ongoing. However, here we have some regulatory measures that are pretty substantial and serious. Now, why the cautious start? Well, because it's very difficult, as, as we mentioned, that from scientific, po scientific point of view, it's very difficult to identify which substance is ED. On the top of that, as you may know, it's the member state committee who have to vote on the inclusion of substances in the candidate list. Either, are they really competent or that? Difficult to say, and hence this um, uh, ED uh, group, expert group next to ECA, um, I would really uh, anticipate that with that expert group, group, there will be more actually proposals coming on ED because then the member states authorities, um, especially the member state committee, can rely on more scientific advice there. So we can certainly expect more uh, to come out of this group. Now, the potential impact on the authorization dossier, we know that the review is, is ongoing, but um, realistically speaking, because also of this idea of low dose effect, um, we may end up very quickly in a situation that uh, the only possibility for submitting authorization dossier will be based on socioeconomic impacts. And then um, it's much more difficult, to be honest, to prepare this kind of dossiers compared to the uh, carcinogens. As my colleague says, well, thanks God is a carcinogen, and especially lung cancer, because we know how to value the, the, uh, the health impact. It's a little bit more delicate and difficult to evaluate environmental impact. And therefore, the advice is really, if you have doubts uh, about the substance classification and if you have doubts about the fact that uh, they may end up in the candidate list in Annex 14, try to start preparing for this, um, actually, socioeconomic analysis pretty early in the process. They would take time, and uh, there is no unanimous agreement on the methodology on how to evaluate those environmental impacts. Another recent, actually, experience with the phthalate dossiers, um, for the phthalates, it has been recognized that there is a threshold, and actually Iraq statuating on the uh, Danish and rejecting the Danish proposal for restriction um, last year. They also acknowledge that there is a threshold. Of course, the dossier and the companies were working actually since 2011 to prepare a dossier based on adequate control route. It is totally based on that presumption. Now, here we we are in the process that recently ended on the uh, consultation with stakeholders. And just to remind, the consultation in the context of the authorization dossier is really to find about the alternatives. But here we have the statements of many NGOs and some member states saying, well, actually, the phthalates are ED, so there's no threshold. So actually, your dossier <laughs> based on adequate control 
doesn't really hold water. Wow. Um, at least from the Commission point of view, and so we had that clearly uh, stated, uh, is that we have to be very clear if a substance is identified as carcinogen or stout or etc. OED, this is the basis, and included in the candidate list, this is the basis for the further steps in the procedure. We need to have some degree of certainty and legal predictability there. So if somebody is actually insisting on the ED properties of a substance that is already on the candidate list in Annex 14, you have to, legally speaking, resubmit um, a dossier for identification and inclusion in the candidate list on a different basis. And actually they're referring to a list of 500 substances saying, well, for the moment we don't really have criteria and we don't have um, uh, the, the different parts of the, the definition is still under discussion, but we have a list and we'll start actually looking into that list and uh, make, make proposals. That process can become really very intensive. For the moment, we, since ROS exists, uh, there was no proposal for restriction of additional substances, but apparently the Commission is coming this year with a, with a proposal. Um, and uh, it could turn very easily into a very frequent and dynamic process where not only the Commission but mem member states will have the right to propose substances. And those proposals can be made probably two, every two years or every four years. That will be a substance for discussion in the coming, actually, weeks in the context of the working group. But again, it's a very tricky one because here we are not talking about substances of high concern where the only obligation is to communicate. Here we're talking about restrictions in all electronics. And because of the privilege of delegated acts, those proposals can be very quickly adopted. As you know, the Commission can propose. There is no TAC vote anymore and uh, there is indeed some degree of consultation with member states. But once it is adopted, there is just two months of veto right of Parliament and Council. So, thank you. <laughs>